What's going on, guys? Welcome to episode number 46 here on the Proven Knowledge Podcast. This is the Creator Series. Today, I welcomed a New York native. She sings, she raps, she does a lot of different styles in her music. Her name is Lena the Artist. Uh, I discovered Lena's music, I believe, around September or October. It might have been even before that. Uh, I discovered her song, I Tried, on Instagram. And I reached out to her about working together and everything. And we've kind of been sending some ideas back and forth. And I hit her up at the beginning of this year to, you know, book her for this podcast and everything. So we finally were able to make that happen um, this week. And we kind of just went into detail about, you know, how she started music around, I think, 2015 as far as recording and writing for people and whatnot and recording her own music. She kind of took a little bit of a break. And then around 2018, she's got back into it. And now she's putting out her first EP that uh, came out the day after this episode was recorded. Uh, it's called Self Made, so I'll leave the link in the YouTube for that. So I, I encourage all you guys to go check out that um, that EP and everything. It's her debut project as a solo artist. Um, and she kind of gave a little bit of background about the personal story she tells in that EP and everything. And, you know, I think Lena just really has a real boss mindset as far as taking her career in her own hands and kind of having a vision of what she wants to do with her music and her branding and everything. And, you know, th- those are the type of people I really have a lot of respect for because they don't wait for the opportunity to come to them. They create the opportunity. Um, and I was very happy to have her on the show. So without further ado, let's get into the episode. Welcome, everyone, to episode number 46 here on the Proven Knowledge Podcast. This is the Creator Series. Today we have an incredible artist out of New York, uh, singer-songwriter, her name is Lena the Artist. How are you, Lena? Yes. I am fine, Anthony. How are you? I'm great. And first of all, I want to say happy early birthday, because I know your birthday is tomorrow. So Yes, it is. Uh, yes, thank that's you. That's awesome. And I know you're dropping some new music. We'll get into that here in a bit. But to start out, I really just want, you know, kind of the basics of how you got into being an artist. For the people uh-huh. that might not know you, just give a little bit of background on how you got into music, all the basic information. So when I was like about, I want to say seven or eight, my sister and my cousins and even my brothers too, they used to like, you know, go to the studio. They all used to collaborate with each other, with their friends. And I was younger and I'm like, I want to do that. So it started with like writing poems and then it started to, okay, I'm going to put them on the beat. And then it went to, okay, my first song was really, really bad. It was really, really, really bad. But I said, you know, in a few years, I want to be able to better that and master that skill like as it got older it was like the passion I had for music got stronger and I want to say about 2015 I actually recorded like my first actual song and it was with my sister and then I took a break and then I was like I don't know if I want to do this but of course it was still like a passion of mine Then in 2018, I mean, from 2015 to 2018, I had, like, a few features. But 2018, I had, like, a big feature where it was, like, a joint collaboration with me and another artist from New York named Desmond Bonet. And from there, it was like, okay, now I need solo work. And now we have self-made. So... I'm, I'm excited now because now it's just like me fully on a project by myself. It was like pressure. It was more pressure versus being like a feature, believe it or not, because it's like you're on your own now. Like it's, it's you can have other people's opinion, but it's like you're solely writing and like vibing out to yourself. Just you, nobody else. What type of what type of freedom do you think you found in being able to do that? Kind of like step out on your own and finally be able to carve something for yourself as opposed to just having other people there. Like, is there any type of... I think it's a challenge. And like how you said, it is more freedom. So, for instance, when you have featured work, it's... You guys have to... It's like 50-50. Mm-hmm. Or sometimes 75-25. Like, sometimes you're just a feature. You get like a little hook or something. Mm-hmm. Where it's so low, it's like you challenge yourself you are more creative you are taking more chances and that's what i was able to do that's what i was like that's one like pro to the whole situation like i was able to think outside the box and be creative and spontaneous with like different sounds and different writing styles so it's just that was really fun that part I think it's good to hear, too, that, you know, you kind of took your time with it. You didn't just rush into, like, oh, I'm going to put out anything that I make on the first go. It was kind of like you you took your time, you got really good at it, and now you're at a point of comfortability where you can be like, now I want to put out material for people to hear because I feel 
comfortable with myself as an artist. You know what I mean? I think a lot of people, they just want to skip right to just putting out content, even if it's not up to par with where, you know, they want it to be. So I think it's mm-hmm. good. I think that's a good lesson to a lot of people is just like, take your, t- if you have to take your time with it, take your time with it. Don't feel pressured, especially at the beginning when you're just getting the hang of things. You kind of just want to make sure that, you know, this is what everything's you want to do. good. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, hats off to you for that. Um, so as far as writing goes, how do you think you're usually beginning the process? Are you like a pen and paper type person? Are you in your phone doing it? Do you need to hear a beat first? Like, how's that going for you? I am a mixture of all of those, but I will say predominantly you will catch me on my phone. Um, either whether it's like voice notes where it's just like off the top of my head and then I'll record like random words then write it out Mm -hmm. then find a beat and put it to a beat and then I'm like that that's that's like me most of the time um the part on the phone that's no that's like predominant that is I'm definitely listening to beats. I'm on like so if I'm on Beat Stars, Beat Stars has like a like a feature where you have like lyrics. I'll open it, I'll listen to the beat over and over again. I'll find a melody, like a kind of way like I would deliver whatever I'm writing. Once I find that, then I start writing. Mm-hmm. Uh, you will catch me with a notebook and pen if I'm like in the car waiting. Uh, if it's like I'm not sure about what I want to write or the melody, then it's pen and paper. How often do you utilize, like, voice memos? Do you do that a lot where you just kind of, like, put an idea in and then come back to it later? My phone is filled with them. (laughs) My phone is filled with songs I didn't even record yet. Like, it's just, it's it's just the top of my head, like, oh, that sounds good. Okay, maybe I'll go back to it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the whole lie, maybe five times out of ten, I go back to them. Or I use voice memos as a reference to something that I I wrote, and I don't want to lose how I delivered it because that's common. Like you'll write to a beat, but then you'll forget how you delivered it. So now it's just like a it's kind of like starting all over again. It's like finding the melody to words now, which is kind of harder, believe it or not. I was gonna say because I've heard that like it's actually easier to listen back to yourself and how you did it as opposed to being like, wait a minute, there's words here, but I don't know how to deliver them with the exactly. melody. Exactly. Yeah. So I've always heard that like voice memos, a lot of writers utilize that and kind of like incorporate that in their songwriting and everything. So it's pretty cool. Uh, so are you like more in the studio? Or are you working out of home? Like where would you say you're more comfortable, uh, you know, recording and whatnot? So when it comes to my work, believe it or not, I've worked out of home before, but it's like with other people's work. Mm -hmm. So it's, I don't think, they say you're your best, like, I mean, no, you're your kind of, I don't want to mess up the saying, it's something with you're your, you're your worst critic or something, like you're harder on yourself, and that's why I go to the studio, Mm -hmm. because I would literally probably not have anything done or out if I recorded myself and I sat there like, is it good? You gotta is get it that, good? Is it, is it like... You gotta get I the other it, perspective, like, kind of. Right. Yeah. So it's like, granted, even if it's not a joint project, it's the engineer that's like, you see their head nod from the booth and you're like, oh, okay, I think I'm going somewhere with this. And I think that's more of my comfortability when it came to my solo project. Mm-hmm. Like, when I work from home, it's, it's easier and it's more, of course, it's more affordable of course mm-hmm. and it's but then it's like also quality and that's where I'm like okay I'm gonna just take my chances and go to the studio for like mixing purposes that I can't master like I, I won't say can't that I haven't mastered yet mm-hmm. so right now it's I'll go to the studio until I feel more comfortable trusting my own judgment with my own work so right now I'm heavily in the studio when it comes to like or just recording in general yeah I, th- I think it's good to get that second opinion because i think a lot of people they're not willing to get out of their comfort zone as far as like it's my creation and i like mm-hmm. it and, like i think it's good too, to, too though to get that like second or third opinion just to be like okay that kind of helps me feel comfortable with putting this out because i heard it from not just myself but i heard it from you know other people and like mm-hmm. okay now i feel good about the product that we're making and we can like move forward and everything so I think that's another thing that's very important that a lot of people sometimes overlook, especially like if you 
are someone that you don't collaborate with a lot of people. You might not be around a lot of other artists and people to you know, work with in your hometown or whatever. But um, I think it's always good to just find out who you can get that second opinion from, even if it's like someone close to you that might not even do music, just to be like, hey, could you come check this out and like see what you know you think of it and whatnot. So, and that's part of like any artist, you have to get to the point of being comfortable with doing that because a lot of the time, you know, like I said, you're very, you know, uh, protective of your creations and everything, but it's just something you got to get to eventually. Um, so are, I was going to ask, are you in, like, New York City, like, in the city, or are you, like, toward the outskirts, like, in the state? I didn't know no, for sure. No, I'm in the city. Okay. I wouldn't say the city city. Like, I'm not near. I mean, I'm close to it, but I'm not in, like, Times Square. Okay. But I'm in Manhattan. I'm in the five boroughs. Okay, so so I guess my question then is for an independent artist or, like, a new, fairly new artist still, what are you doing to kind of separate yourself from others, kind of, like, have a unique approach to your career, and how are you able to stand out as someone who's just kind of getting their feet wet and just now starting to put out their own music? I have what I've acknowledged and just witnessed. I have, I don't want to, I think where I'm stuck at as well, I would say, is like everybody, I don't want to say everybody, but most people from New York, excuse my dogs, but most people from New York have a, I want to say this unique sound about them, you know? Like, when you hear them and you hear their flow, you're like, they're from New York. And it's not a bad thing, but I guess, you know, what I want is I want people to be intrigued, curious, question who I, like, where's she from? Like, you know, like, I don't want to, I don't want you to hear me. You might because of, like, how some, like, how I articulate some words. So you're probably like, oh, she's from New York. Or, like, certain things I'll say, and you'll be like, oh, she's from New York. But I seek kind of to be I seek kind of to be like different with writing or not sticking to one type of I wouldn't it's not genre but like a type of song so like I could do love songs sometimes I'll try to rap sometimes I'll like just do a free write and like go way different off of what I've done in the past and it is very very tricky but I've always seek like how I said prior to challenge myself so with self-made I kind of touch upon that um they're four songs four short songs and they each have a different sound to them so that's how I seek to stand out um I want to tell a story I want to do poems I want to maybe might rap or I might sing and it's like I don't want to just stick to one thing so and that's what also came about the whole like name Lena the artist like I just spoke about that with somebody. It's like, I can't just pinpoint one. I can't say, I wouldn't say I'm a singer. I wouldn't say I'm a rapper. So it's just like, I'm just an artist. Mm -hmm. it's, and... it's so good to have diversity too. Like, I think people are afraid to kind of get out of like what they've been doing for a while too, especially if you were already making like one type of music and you're like, well, I don't know if I should experiment with this, but like, why not? You know what I mean? If you've already found your footing with one thing, why not kind of just see what you can come up with and you never know what what's going to come out of it so right and i think like being from where i am from it's just like in new york it's and it's not a bad thing that's why a lot of people go mainstream and pop but it's like i do want to give what people want to hear but i'm not going to be solely invested in that because you'll be surprised like how you said who will listen to something you just create so before why it took me so long in the past to actually gain that comfortability and that confidence was because i used to think like i need to make something that they want to hear instead of i'm gonna just record what i feel sounds good put it out and see who catches it and relates to it now i'm at that stage so before it was, I need to sound like this, I need to sound like that, because, you know, this is in right now, this is what New York wants, this is what, if I could get what New York wants, then maybe I could get what everybody else wants, and now it's just kind of like a, honestly, like, I, I want somebody to relate, but it's what Lena wants to put out, like, it's just what I feel is a vibe, and hopefully others will vibe with it, I think that's just, that's, that's the best part about it, like, Maybe I'll just go mainstream and pop for my own creative thinking or my own way of doing music. It's not always just joining in with the crowd all the time. So That, to me, like, 
always like handicaps the creativity because you're too focused on trying to do what everyone else is already doing and you think that well if I just do that then it'll work but that kill that to me kills the energy because as a creative you want to be the only person you can be is yourself you know what I mean like you can't try and be someone else and copy it it's just not going to work and you're going to get burnt out quick because you're trying to do something that you know someone else is doing and you're trying to copy everything they do it's like for me I think it's just more about like you can study people and have like people you look up to and be like I want to do what they're doing but kind of just take a little elements from what they do and incorporate it into what you do and do it spin. yeah yep. and do it in your own way and then you'll be on like a a good path so I think what you mentioned is very important so um I think everyone should kind of take that to mind honestly so who would you say have been your biggest influences as far as like you know made you say i want to you know be in music uh people that you grew up listening to maybe that you still listen to who would some of those artists be i love one like i think i just i actually would love to meet her one day but queen latifah is one um just her as an just as an entertainer not just an artist like a rapper but just like as an entertainer I just, I love it. I love her sense of style as well. And um, I study, like, I, I, I just I just love her. Like, I can't even explain it. But um, aside from Queen Latifah, it would be, like, Janet Jackson, like, the R&B switch to it, like, how she was in the 90s more so. Mm-hmm. And, um, of course, Whitney Houston. That's the voice. Like, and of course, like I might have like sing. I want to call what it's like singing and rapping on tracks, but it's like the goal is to one day touch upon a, a soul song, like you know. And I, I, I think that's why I chose and mainly look up to those three individuals like heavily. Now, is there anyone that you ever want to do a collaboration with? Maybe out of those people, or maybe anybody else that's like, oh, they're the dream collaboration. If I could collab with anybody, it would be Tiana Taylor. Mm. Tiana Taylor is like, she's another one. Like, she's from New York and didn't want to be anybody else's sound. She's another one I actually would say I look up to because it's like she found her own way, her own style, and allowed people to follow and, like, listen to her and admire things she does. Like, she's very, she's very unique. And that's very hard to come by. Like, you know, she she's from New York as well, but she didn't just want to blend and be like everybody else. Like, she stood out in her own way and, like, built herself up her own way and her own style and didn't conform to anything else. So if I could collab with anybody, if you tell me I could collab with Tiana Taylor, I would be, like, extremely happy. And then out of the three I said, of course, I could only collab with two. I would collab with them both some way, shape, or form. But definitely other artists, like today's, like, day and age, Tiana Taylor, for sure. It's cool, too, because she's another one that has now evolved into, now she's directing movies, like doing videos, yeah. and things like that. And she was already an actress as well. Mm-hmm. So, like, it's cool to see her not just staying in the music realm. She's also exactly. doing a lot of other creative efforts and everything. So, And I remember, like... Her whole story with, like, her, she was trying to put out an album for so many years, and it got shelved, and, like, she just had to be patient and wait her turn, but she didn't stop going, you know what I mean? Like, she just exactly. kept like, working and through I think all that. that. That's, like, an inspiration. Like, I, I look up I look up to her as well. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't want to, like, of course, we all look up to legends, but it's just, like, if, if it was somebody around my age that is, like, popular now, it would be her. Because she stayed in her own lane and didn't allow anybody to kind of, like, deter the road she was going for herself. Now, look how you said, look at her now. Like, she she has different and many facets to her. So. The, the hard work just paid off. So that's really, like, well, you can look at someone like her and just be like, if I just keep going, you know, you never know where it's going to land. You just have to mm-hmm. keep working. So that's big. Um, out of everyone that you've collabed with so far, maybe close collaborators, who do you think is, like, someone that, you've worked with that you really enjoy you know the creative energy that you guys share together the person I mentioned like in the very beginning his name is Desmond Bonet um we created a joint project called the lovers playlist in 2018 and I don't even know where it stemmed from like you know like he asked me to be a feature on one song 
And then from that one song, we created a 12-track project together. And it was really, like, that was one project where I could say it was legit 50-50, you know? And it was like, if I came up with something, he wrote to it. If he came up with something, I wrote to it. We sat down and really, like, executed each, each track and each idea, like, equally. And I think it's always fun working with him. Like, I'm pretty sure... Like, anybody that has me on Instagram sees, like, I'll share his stuff, he'll share mine, and there'll be future works, of course, with us together on it as well. Like, he's very creative and a unique individual as well. I've seen that album pop up, like, under your name, so I gotta, I gotta check it out eventually, because I didn't know who he was. Yes. So I'm like, well, she's on it, it's gotta be pretty good, so. Oh my gosh, not just because of it, like the features he has on it, it's like other artists. And I think that's why I love the like the project. Like it's not just because I'm on it and it's not just because I've worked with him, but it's like he took his time and I got to witness that. He took his time, had different upcoming artists as well from throughout New York on that project. So it's very authentic and it's just he's he's such a dope individual to work with. So I, I, that'll be one that I've worked with that I would like love to continue working with. Mm-hmm. Do, you, do you have a favorite song that maybe you've been a part of either on that project or something else that you kind of remember that was either you know an experience to create or you really enjoyed doing it? My favorite song is my one single name I tried. Uh, why why would I pick that? Is I listen to that song sometimes and I get caught in a trance like wait that's me like you know like that's that one song where I'm like wait wait that's really me like I sing that like it's just because that song was really me breaking a wall and just being like I'm actually singing on that there's no form of rap there's no like it was just singing and I literally always listen to that song and get caught in a trance until I see like, oh, Lena the artist, oh, that's me. I recorded that, I I love that song. That song has a special, special place in my heart. And if there's any recent, like a song, I just like, I just dropped my project Self Made, but it will be dropped, my song Self Made on Self Made. It's just because it's like, I'm, I'm kinda open and honest and letting people that listen get to know me more on a personal level, but, Right now, I tried is still number one. So. That's the one I discovered you from. I'm pretty sure because I remember. I like, tried. I remember being on Instagram and like found your profile, and that was like up there. And I'm like, well, I gotta listen to this because it's the first song I see. So I listen to that, and I'm like, oh yeah, she's she's got she's got it. So I'm like, I gotta, I gotta reach Thank out. Thank you. So, yeah, I still, I still get that. I have like a playlist for uh, the uh, podcast on Spotify for like the people that are. Uh, guests, so I'll probably put that one in the playlist, honestly. Cause that was like Please the one, do. That was like the one that I discovered you from, so it would only be right, honestly. Um, I love, I love that song. Like everything about it is just like wow. Like you know, I don't even. I remember writing it, and when I wrote it, it just it flowed like it was so smooth. Like you know, most people get write like writer's block. It was just like I just heard the beat. I it, it stuck with me, and I just wrote it. Mm-hmm. Like, it just went, it went perfectly. I know nothing's perfect, but that went perfect. And then to hear it and the outcome, it was just amazing. Mm-hmm. Super, super awesome. And I love that Thank song. So that's a great thing to kind of hear the story behind it and everything. Um, so, so for you as an artist so far, how do you think, how important has networking been to you in your career as far as, like, just meeting new people, kind of trying to create new opportunities for yourself as an independent artist? What has that been like for you? So, honestly, I never witnessed how important networking is until I couldn't anymore. Meaning, when the pandemic hit, ever, of course, everybody like kind of became distant and we were forced to be apart, like social distance and all of that. You never realize how much that matters until it's taken away temporarily. And when I look back on any other networking event that I've had, it's always good to see how many people actually, like you kind of, it kind of takes away your doubts or how many people vibe to your sound or how many people catch what you're saying and understand your work. And then it's like, they like your sound, so then they want to work with you. Or they'll hold you in their back pocket for a good track that they feel like you'll be on. Like, you know, and like 2020, it kind of, 
took us all aback when it's like you couldn't do that anymore. And I never, and I won't lie, I didn't view the significance or the importance behind networking until I wasn't able to do it anymore. I feel like New York too probably had a lot of like networking events <sighs> all like the shows. time. Yeah, all the time. So all the time we used to have like like. SOBs was a big venue to have like upcoming artists just perform there and um we just like I used to always just I didn't get to perform there yet but I used to attend other people's performance and just love the vibe mm-hmm. so when it kind of like everything closed it was like damn I wish I took more of an advantage and I wish I participated more myself so now it's just like once that door opens again, I'm definitely out there and I'm on it when it comes to networking because I see what it once was and I've seen it not be there. So it's definitely something that plays a huge part. So I was going to say, I, I really hope, you know, I, we had a lot of conversations in like October with some of my guests about, you know, what the future of, you know, live events is going to be and everything. And mm-hmm. I think I think for me, I just hope that everything kind of – you know, it might not return to exactly normal, like how it was, but I really hope it's somewhere close to that where everyone continues to get these opportunities because, you know, especially for new artists, that was such an important thing is to be able to, like, go to showcases, kind of show people what they have, kind of meet new people in person and not just through a phone all the time and kind of just pick their brains and get a lot of helpful information. So you know, hopefully that can happen uh, eventually and then come back in the right way. Um and especially for you being in New York, I feel like you just, just having to be told to stay in the house kind of sucks. Uh, oh, man. You know, what's funny is at first it seemed like, a, what the hell am I going to do? And then you, there's a time and frame where it's like, oh, okay, this isn't too bad now. Mm-hmm. And so you realize like you still got to continue and go back out into the real world. So it's like. When it when initially like around this time last year, I was like, oh no, Shut, like this this pandemic has to go. Curfew? What? What? Ten o'clock? It's about to be summertime. It's springtime. Like you know, it's like at that at that time before everything like got a little bit more serious. I was I was upset at first. Initially, I was like, I don't, I cannot stay in the house all day. What the hell am I gonna do? And you know, I realized. Sitting in the four walls and just like twiddling my thumbs for two seconds, I became very creative. And then it was just like, okay, now it's like you work on the things you didn't have the time or you felt like you didn't have the time to work on. So I think that's what it was. I used the pandemic to find, like, to use that time I swore I never had before to put to music to music. Exactly. And it's always good to get that positive out of something that really wasn't that positive. You know what I mean? Like, as long as you have your health and you're okay, you can at least utilize the time to be creative and start moving in the right direction. So that's super important. Um, so what do you think is has been a piece of business advice that you've gotten as far as, like, the music industry that you've kind of taken and kind of ran with and, you know, something that you know is very important that you're starting to apply to your own career? What's important that I've learned? Not, you know, this is probably something that has helped me, like, even day to day. Not everybody's going to support you. Not everybody's going to support what you do. Not everybody's going to understand and see your vision and agree or accept it. But that doesn't mean you stop. Mm. That was something I wish I knew five years ago that is something that I wish I applied five years ago but you know I'm glad I know now and I'm kind of sticking to that like when I post things I don't expect anybody to have feedback or acknowledge it or react to it or say oh hey this is nice oh hey I don't like that and it's it's okay not everybody will support you but that doesn't mean you stop that's one thing I took from everything. That'll be something I'll always apply in the back of my head, like going forward with any endeavor. Like not everybody's going to agree with you, but it's okay. It's good too to stay always in the middle somewhere. Cause if mm-hmm. you're too high, it could be bad. If you're too low, it could be really bad. So like just stay grounded in the middle at all times if you can. You know what I mean? Just focus on the present moment because that's all right. you can control anyway. So mm-hmm. yeah, that's super, super awesome stuff. So I know we've mentioned self-made a few times. It drops tomorrow. By the time yes. by the time this podcast is out, it'll already already be out. So I'll probably like put the links in the YouTube and everything. 
but you know, out of anything else you could give us information-wise about what to expect from this EP, what would that be? Self-made is honestly just getting to know me. Getting, the last two songs are personal. The first two songs are being creative, and it's just... So I'm going to run through the track list. It'll be out. And the first song is Priority, which is just being creative. You know, people probably can relate to it. Those that have significant others. And, you know, you kind of fall off a little bit. Then with Miss Call, it's like a tragedy. It's a, it's a dramatic story, a plot twist to it. Distant is like a personal tribute to my dad and my aunt who passed last year. And then self-made is like just getting to know me. You know, like I always said, there's upcoming artists and celebrities nowadays that just post what they want people to see or talk about what they want people to know. I just felt like with self-made, it's I'm going to tell you who I am and I'm not going to be ashamed or hide it. Like, this is me. This is who I am. This is this is where I'm coming from right now as of 2021. And I think that's just why I, I love that song so much. I just made it the name of the whole project. And that's where it stemmed from. Like, yeah, I'm thankful I have people that support me. But it's just like, it's a mental strength within you to continue a project and see it through. And that's where I said, oh, yeah, this, this is self-made, man. Like, I kind of I kind of did that. I didn't ask anybody for their input, their idea. It was just like... Okay, you're going to listen to my finished project and tell me how you feel about it. But it wasn't like, should I keep this? Should I do this? Should I not do that? It was, I'm going to do this. I'm doing this. I'm going to record it. Then ask for input. So I kind of creatively, I literally did all of that by myself. (laughs) And it was just like, I kind of asked towards, like, once everything was done, like, hey, you want to see how this sounds? But it wasn't like a, should I keep it? I didn't even, I didn't even bother with that question. It's like, it's done. But I'll let you listen to it. Like, well, I can't wait to hear it because honestly, I'm I'm not even gonna lie to you. I didn't know until like this week that you were even dropping, and I was like, I didn't wow. post it. You're not going crazy. That's the thing. I was I, like, I had no idea. I'm like, did I miss something before? Or like, no. Mm-hmm. I told you know I was like hesitant, so I finished everything the second week of March. Like as far as mixing, I finished recording in February, but I finished finished mixing in March, and I was like, I could promote for the next two weeks. I'm like, but nah, I'm just gonna become like full force behind promotion the week of my birthday, and I'm gonna drop it on my birthday, and it's like instead of just like me saying oh it's my birthday it's hey now listen to this four like this seven minute project i just did each song is like a minute and change the whole project is seven i want people to listen like you know and just get a sense of each style that i kind of touch upon with like with this project and you didn't lose a memo you didn't, you didn't miss anything i just didn't promote it i went mia until i knew like i wanted to know myself what i wanted to do what I was going to do, how I was going to do it. And once I did, that's when I promoted it. And I posted it literally two days ago. <laughs> yeah, because I didn't, I didn't want to be the one person that was like, oh, I didn't see this. She posted it like a month ago, but no, you just, nope. this week. So there you go. It's, pr- it's fresh off the press then, and we're ready to hear it for sure. Now, I know you might not know this yet, but is this going to be like the precursor to like a bigger project, like an album eventually, or what do you got planned? Yes. Yes, this you, is just... Can you disclose anything is, about that, maybe, that, hmm? we, that we might not know? I have... I, so, fun fact, I had a whole project, like an actual long, thought-out, drawn-out album I was working on, and I sidetracked. I wrote these four songs randomly in February and recorded them. These are random. Mm-hmm. And I said, before I put out anything big, I just want people to know I'm here. I want you to listen. So, no, I'm not going to put out... 12 songs that's like a project or I mean like I did it already and you know a lot of people listen and the lovers playlist helped me see that people will listen but it's just like I want something to say I'm here I'm still here I plan to be here and stay here so just listen like give me seven minutes seven minutes of your time Mm -hmm. And in the future which will be soon I plan to drop you you will see very very soon very, very soon. When the podcast comes out, you'll see it's just going to be a whole lot of other stuff that I intend to 
put out and do more and just show that I'm here, you know? So you will see more. I'm not just going to drop this and disappear again. This is going to be consistent now. It's like, I'm confident now. I got this. I got it. So now I'm just trying to make the best of it. It's good, though, because this is like the appetizer for like the main course. Then. Like, it's exactly. Just the start. It's just a taste of the full deal later on. So that's awesome. So I know you're on. I know you're on Instagram. I think you're on Twitter too. Where can people find you on social media at? If they want to follow you. I yes. So Instagram, you can find me it is at underscore Lena the artist, which is L E N A the T H E artist A R T I S T. And on Twitter, you can find me Lena the artist as well. I just made Twitter, so I have a few followers. I'm trying to actually start tweeting more. And on Facebook, it's just Lena, four letters, just Lena. I'm working on adding Lena the artist, so it's just all, like, the same and easy across the board. And on YouTube, I am Lena the artist as well. I'm now going to post more on my channel. There's a few videos there now. And, yeah, it's just Lena the artist. Once you put it in Google, once you follow me on Instagram, it is in my, the link in my bio to everything. So, you know, I just, you know, if people like the sound, if people like what I'm doing, subscribe, follow, and just stay tuned. Super awesome. So I got a couple more questions, and then we'll wrap up here. So Mm -hmm. if you could go back 10 years ago, maybe give yourself advice, maybe not change anything at all, what do you think you would Mm -hmm. do? 10 years ago, oh, I feel kind of old now just thinking about that. (laughs) Just a little. I'm like, hey, I would have been 15. Um, 15 year old me, what would I tell myself? I tell myself, keep that energy, keep the energy. Why do I say that is the energy that I had at 15 was like, I wasn't, I was not feasible. Like, you know, like it was the confidence was there. It was, it was really strong. And I allowed the, I wouldn't say like it, not necessarily anybody, just my surroundings to kind of deter that. And I felt like 10 years ago, I would just tell myself, what matters more is first is if you believe in you. Everything else will fall into place, but you have to believe in yourself and always believe in yourself first. That's what I would tell myself 10 years ago. Like, you have confidence and believe in you. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you'll get the support and you'll find that other people will believe in you as well. But if you don't, not many people will. Mm -hmm. So 10 years from now, where do you envision you being at in your career and in your life? Ah, let's see. Let's hope I'm like a multi-billionaire, right? <laughs> Almost billionaire. But, you know, it's just, you know, I won't lie. I know everybody thinks I'm crazy when I say this. It's just, it's not even about being a multi-millionaire, but, you know, that would be amazing. But just to be financially stable, to be content with being like an entrepreneur, a uh, my own boss, you know, Mm. like to live off being my own boss and not having to deal with like the technicalities of a regular job, you know, and it's nothing wrong with it, but that's just not, that's not my goal. Like it's not, that's not something I want to do 10 years from now. Like I want to be my own boss. I want to be able to be financially stable and like live life happily, you know? And, like, I want people to be able to watch, listen, and just vibe with Lena the artist and just grow with me in the next decade and more. Always a great goal to have right there. Nothing wrong with that. So do you have any final words of wisdom today for the listeners? Yes. Again, I can't stress. You, you got to love, love you, love what you do have confidence and faith in it even when it seems like it's hard even when you feel like you can't do it you just gotta give yourself a few seconds to tell yourself you can don't let anybody deter you like deter where your thoughts are where your goals are don't let anybody tell you they're not big enough or realistic like think outside the box and go to it you can do it as long as you believe you can that's to anybody not just artists just anyone once you do that you could accomplish everything and more 
Well, love it. Absolutely love it. And Lena, that's all I have for you today. Uh, like I said, I appreciate Thank you, you for having back me. With me. Have a good birthday tomorrow. And I'm gonna be Thank checking you. Out, I'm going to be checking out the EP and everything. And, you know, I think everyone is going to be looking forward to what you got coming soon. You know, maybe we could do a part two of this eventually as well. So we'll see what I'm, happens. I'm up for it. Listen, Anthony, I actually have a surprise for you. So this is even fun. So, yes, I need you to stay tuned to, like, different songs I'm dropping. Oh. I, I I said that the other day. I'm like, oh, this will be so dope. I'm not even disclosing anything else. Just know that I said that. And, guys, check out Self Made if you haven't already. And, yeah, thank you for having me. Absolutely. And I, let's, we, we're, we have to do a part two. It's just yeah. a must. I'm planning on doing part two is the most of these. So this is definitely one that we can make happen for sure. So should definitely. Be, be dope. Mm-hmm. Thanks, everyone, for listening today. That was episode number 46. We'll be back this time next week. If you want to support, hit the support button on your podcast streaming platform. And until next week, we will see you then. Thank you very much.